Kirby Gray Hunter, and we are still Wednesday, April the 3rd. Um, it's, I don't know, maybe close to 6 o'clock in the evening. I want to go ahead and make this quick video um, so I can finish dinner. Uh, this video here is going to be book tips to help you read more. I have 12 little tips that I wrote down. Um, and these are just little suggestions, you know, things in my opinion that I think could help you read. Um, number one, you always want to bring a book wherever you go. That's why I like having my Nook or having my, my um, book on my phone because you can read wherever you're going. Uh, while Jay's in ballet class, I read. Or when I was at the airport waiting for Derek, I'm reading. Or if you're just sitting there and say, you know, somebody's watching something on TV, like Derek's watching some wrestling I don't want to watch, so I'm reading on my phone or I have this. Um, or, you know, have my book with me. But if you have your book in your purse or backpack or electronic reader, you know, you can find time to read in between, you know, doctor's offices, you're waiting and waiting for children to be picked up from school or you're going from class to class whatever it is but if you have a book you would definitely read it versus get on your phone and looking through facebook and instagram and you know so on and so on all right number two you want to make reading a ritual just like you get up every morning and have your coffee or your tea or whatever it is you do in, your, in the morning smoothie whatever you do make it a ritual if you get up and you exercise on your treadmill or you go for a walk then i would suggest getting your audiobook and plug in your earphones and listen to your audiobook as you're walking or doing exercise or if you're cooking making lunches in the morning you can listen to your listen to the book being read to you um you know make make the most of your time and if you make it a daily ritual then it's something that you set time aside for and something that you you do a regular routine. So I read different times of the day, uh, but mostly in the morning when I am going to be sitting exactly right here drinking my coffee in the morning, I will drink my coffee and I will read a book um, instead of looking through Facebook and all that. I, I'll read. Uh, so if you make a make it a ritual and stay repetitive, it'll it'll be so easy. So you know when you get up before you start your day, you can get thirty minutes in or on your lunch break, or 30 minutes before you go to sleep. Um, so definitely make it a ritual. Number three, uh, don't set yourself up for failure. And I mean that as in, if you are seeing other people who are reading like, you know, War and Peace, that is like such a big book. You know, if you are, if you are, are not a strong reader and you're wanting to get into reading, don't jump in and grab a very, very big book. Start off with something that you can pace yourself. Something that you something that's not very thick, not very many pages in it. That way, when you read it, you complete it and you're like, good, you know, like you feel good about it because you've completed a book. You're like, okay, I'm done. I'm get another one. But if you get a big book that's say 700 pages, 500 pages, you're going to feel completely overwhelmed. And then you're going to be like, I don't want to do this no more. So you definitely don't want to set yourself up for failure. You want to definitely get something that you're interested in, something that is not overwhelming to you. And there is nothing wrong with getting youth books, young adult books, teen books, whatever category you want to put them in. Um, I'm reading Dumbo right now, and I absolutely love it. It is a young adult book, and I love it. I read everything. So, I mean, uh, I'm like, I don't care. I'm going to read my Dumbo book. <laughs> it's so good. Okay. Okay. Number four, pick a good spot to read. Now, I have my recliner in my witchy room, and then Derek has a recliner in his man cave. And his, I really like his because it's right there next to a big window. So when he's up there playing games or watching TV, I sit in his recliner and I'm reading. Um, I'm about to get Jade a recliner for her bedroom and put it by her window because she likes to read. And having created a place to read where you have a nice comfy spot, like, if you can get a recliner or a comfortable chair and have a nice blanket and a little pillow where you can spend time reading, that's great. I know a lot of people read in bed and that's cool too, but the problem with reading in bed is you fall asleep. So you wanna get a place where you're comfortable, where you're not gonna be distracted. Um, reading outside is great if you have a nice quiet place to read, but if you're reading outside and there is constant noise, like look, the phone is going off. Like there's constant noise going on. It's, you know, it's, you're going to have so many distractions. 
So definitely find a good spot to read. Um, number five. I'm sorry, the phone is so loud. Um, music or not. Some people listen to music while they read. I don't mind listening to music, but I have to listen to music that doesn't have any words in it, just instrumental music. I mostly listen to witch chants or I listen to instrumental Christmas music or I listen to my, I love uh, classical music. I love opera. So that definitely puts me in a great, great, um, you know, mood. It makes my environment for reading, you know, it really sets the mood. You know, if you don't want to listen to music, maybe light a candle. I don't know, but set the mood up. If you're going to set time aside to read, you want it to be something that's very special for you. You know, just like when you sit down and watch a movie, you get a blanket, you get some popcorn. You're kind of setting the mood for the movie. Same thing with your book. You're setting the mood for your reading time. And if you make it ritual, uh, like a daily ritual for yourself, you know, or, you know, every other day, it's something you look forward to. And it's something that, you know, um, your loved ones will be like, okay, you know, she's reading right now. Let me leave her alone. You know, like it's some, do something for yourself and create that, that atmosphere. So, um, like I said, music or not, uh, number six book clubs. It's really cool to join book clubs because you can read a particular book with other members. And there's so many book clubs online. There's book clubs on Facebook. Um, so like Facebook pages, you can get on several different uh, Facebook pages that are for book clubs. And you can see what everybody else is reading and you can interact with them. And that's really good. Or find a friend who wants to do a book club with you read the book and then you get together either through FaceTime or through the phone and or in person and talk about the book. I think that's a really no, a nice way to read with a friend and that really encourages you to read more. Uh, number seven, um, you want to pick up books that you're interested in. So before you start purchasing books, write down the type of books that you want to read. Things that make you like I know I don't like romance books. I don't. That doesn't mean that I'll never pick up one, but that's not the section that I go to. Um, you know, I love to read. I don't, but I don't like to read Western books. I love to read books on Native Americans, but I don't like cowboy um, books on like Western stories. I, that's something I don't like. I don't like reading romance. That's another thing that I don't like. Um, but other than that, and I don't like reading like plays, like the format of a play. I don't like those either, but I love to read, you know, so I know the type of books that I like. So I definitely want to look into those type of books. And, um, so that way the books that I'm picking up, I'm interested in, and I'm going to read it. I'm not buying this book because everybody else has it. I'm buying this book because I'm interested in it and I want to read it. Um, so you definitely want to, um, you know, keep that in mind. Number eight, you want to ditch the numbers. You hear people talking about, oh, I'm going to read a hundred books in a, in a, in a whole year. I'm going to read a hundred books. Well, good luck to you. <laughs> um, cause even saying 50 books in a year is a lot. You want, how about just reading one book a month? How about that? And then you get 12 books in, but if you read something that's super small, like let's just say you get a book and it's something as thin as this book, you might be able to read two books a month. So you definitely want to ditch the numbers. It is nice to set goals for yourself. Now, goals are great if you are a very active reader and you've worked yourself up to this. But if you're just starting, you definitely want to ditch the numbers. If you just say, I want to finish, I just want to finish this book. If you just set that for yourself, set that goal. But do not set goals for yourself that are not realistic in the beginning. And not saying because you are not a fast reader or you don't want, it's just, we got life, you know, we got things to do. Work, kids, cook, clean, you know, like, so definitely ditch the numbers. Um, number nine, you want to make a book pile. I have a book pile of books that I want to read this year. So again, that does kind of clash with ditch the numbers. Now, I'm not saying I'm going to read these 50 books. And these are the books that I would like to read this year. Oh my God, if that phone doesn't stop ringing. So <laughs> I will make a book pile and say, these are the books that I would like to read, you know, this year. And if I don't get to them, that's okay. Because I have like three books from last year I didn't read that went onto this, this pile. So they're on the top of the pile. 
And so that way I know when I finish my book, I have a pile here that I, oh, books that I want to read like ASAP. Okay. So that's something you can do if you want. I mean, that really does, it encourages me to hurry up and finish reading my books because I have this other one I want to start. So like right now I'm trying to finish Dumbo because I have um, five of the books that I got. So definitely want to get rid of that and, you know, read something else. Um, number 10, audiobooks. We've talked about audiobooks already. Um, having audiobooks are amazing. Um, definitely is something that you uh, should look into because again, you while you're driving to and from work or walking, exercising, cooking, whatever it is that you're doing, folding clothes or just laying in bed, you know, if you want to listen to your book instead of reading, you definitely can listen to audiobooks and have someone read to you. Like, how nice is that? Somebody read to me. I love audiobooks. Number 11, reward yourself. So when you finish reading your book, say, oh, I finished reading my book. I'm going to go reward myself. That could be several different things. It could be subscribing to one of your book, the book box descriptions that I was talking to you about. Subscribing to one of those nice little fancy smancy book clubs where you get a book and you get all these little goodies. That could be a great little treat once a month. I mean, you know, or you can go and purchase another book or whatever treat you want to treat yourself as a reward to reading a book. You know, we do it for children all the time. We tell the kids, if you read this book by the end of the week, you get this. So why shouldn't we have one, right? And number 12, um, I have a 100 page cutoff. So when I'm reading a book, I say I'm going to read 100 pages. And when I'm, so I'll go through wherever, if I'm on page, say page one, I'll go to page 100 and put my bookmark right behind it. And that way I know I'm going to read all of that till I get to my bookmark. And that's what I do. I read 100 pages per book when I sit down to read. You don't have to do that, but you can do cutoffs. You can say after 20 pages, I'm going to stop reading. But I started myself from 10 and then I went to 20, 30, 40. You know, I went like that until now I'm at 100 pages each time I pick up a book. So I get through books pretty quick and once I'm reading and I'm just like, oh, I'm so into this. I don't want to put it down because, you know, it's so good. But I do cutoffs. So, all right, guys, those are my 12 tips. I'm sure there are more tips that um, I'm going to know as soon as like, I'm like, God, I should have said this one. But, you know, I'm not going to remember them right this moment. But anyway, I hope these little tips help you um, and helps you to encourage yourself to read. Oh, and also, here's another little tip. I know I only said 12, but here's another little tip. If you have children and uh, you want to encourage them to read, you can do the same thing. Like when you go get yourself a book, get them a book or let them pick their own book. And then all of you sit down and read. Say, hey, we're going to read right now. We're going to spend an hour reading. It could be comic books for them. It could be children's books. It could be read-along books. Uh, but this encourages them to read and it could be the same thing. They can put some nice comfy pillows and blankets down or find a nice spot outside. Find a nice place, uh, create a really nice place for you guys to do family reading time and set a timer. And y'all are going to read for, let's just say 30 minutes or an hour, however long you want to do 10 minutes of even that's all you want to do, but it's quiet time. Play on, put some nice quiet music and they will be encouraged to read and you'll be encouraged to read. And this way you both know when y'all finish your books, you'll get a treat. And for your child, you can say, when you finish this book, you'll get a treat. Like encourage them, put like a little something up and put a little star, put the name of the book that at the dollar store, I found this little dry eraser thing. And it is a, um, it's a list where you can write the books and then um, you can, you know, check them off at the end. But you can create anything. You can write down the books that your child wants to read. And as they read them, as they're getting through certain marks, like let's just say after they've read five pages, you know, put a star. After they've gotten to page, you know, 20, put a star. And this helps encourage them because they want to finish that book. So when they finish the book, they can get a prize. It could be a little treasure box that you've made, like just get like a little box. Go get, go to the dollar store, buy a lot of little dollar toys, um, whatever, little knickknacks and put it in a box 
and say, when you finish reading your book, you can pick any little thing from here. Or when you finish reading your book, we'll go to the bookstore and we'll get another book. You know, there's so many creative things that you can do to help your children, to encourage them to read. But remember, you know, your children um, are a um, definitely a, uh, a mirror image of you. You know, your your kids learn from you. They learn from the things that you do. And so if they see you reading and finding, um, you know, pleasure from this and it, it makes you happy and it excites you, then they, they'll have interest in it. And it may be a slow process, but, you know, Jade never liked to read. And now she's, she's really enjoying reading. And so it, it took some time to get there. And so, but anyway, those are just little tips. <coughs> I hope this helped. And as always, I love you all and blessed be.